Hello everyone and welcome to Croydon's Holocaust Memorial Day service. I want to start by referencing an extraordinary speech which had just been given by Arnold Schwarzenegger. In his speech he talked about his experience and his parents' experience of Kristallnacht. He spoke of his parents believing lies. Lies designed to turn ordinary people against their neighbours, their friends and their fellow human beings. Now believing those lies resulted in the worst atrocity ever committed in history, the Holocaust. The actions of those who committed this worst of all crimes have been and continue to be documented by survivors and others far more qualified to tell you about them than I am. But I will say this, genocide. The very word should fill all good and decent people with horror. Stories of human beings being dragged from their homes, forced to work and eventually killed. How can anyone read accounts of Jewish babies being burned alive and not feel this, this horror? But the truth is, even these stories weren't enough. Since that day, we've seen Bosnia and many other cases of persecution and murder against groups of people on an industrial scale. This again is good people listening to and not challenging the lies and hate from a small group of evil people. Any one of these people could have been the one to save a life. Or to quote from this year's powerful theme, anyone could have been the light in the darkness. One of the most important lessons we can learn is those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. That is why this event every year is so important. Heart-wrenching and sickening as these true accounts may be to hear, it is essential that we keep telling them. And finally, I want to finish with a plea to everyone watching. Many years ago in my university room, I was having a conversation with a dear friend of mine. We promised each other that we would not be the ones to stand by. It's a promise I have always held dear and I repeat it to myself frequently. The truth is, however, though, no one can know when faced with the horror on the scale we've spoken about, 
how they'll respond. But please remember, all of these atrocities are allowed to happen because essentially good people didn't stop them. Please be the one to stand up and say no. I'm now going to read the Holocaust Memorial Day Pledge. We honour the survivors still among us and reaffirm our goals of mutual understanding and justice. We vow to remember the victims of Nazi persecution and of all genocide. We value the sacrifices of those who have risked their lives to protect or rescue victims as a touchstone of the human capacity for good in the face of evil. We recognise that humanity is still scarred by the belief that race or religion or disability or sexual orientation or gender or age makes some people's lives worth less than others. We pledge to strengthen our continuing commitment of opposition to racism, anti-Semitism, homophobia and discrimination on the grounds of disability or ability, age, gender, nationality or religion. We believe in a society centred on the ideals of peace, justice and community, where all people can live with dignity and respect. I'm now going to light the peace candle in commemoration of this pledge. The theme for this year is Be the Light in the Darkness. It encourages everyone to reflect on the depths which humanity can sink to but also the ways that individuals and communities can resist that darkness to be the light before, during and after genocide. Humanity is not a word recognised by those who commit genocide. They have instigated the darkest depths of hell. We can, and indeed must, raise the perception of these deeds back up into the light for all to see. In today's technology, Misinformation, outright lies, denial, prejudice and conspiracy theories, such as one we can see now that Jews cause or benefit from COVID, spread faster than ever on social media. This is a dark side of what could and should be used to share the, shine a light on the inherent goodness of much of the world. The media is frequently to blame for twisting the truth to suit the narrative. We must be alert to this and have the courage and responsibility to counter and confront these distortions. One man shining light and truth on these is Colonel Richard Kemp CBE, a retired British Army officer who served in Afghanistan and was also head of the International Terrorist Team in the UK Cabinet Office. He frequently attends the United Nations and calls out their denial of many truths, citing his own experiences. Everyone here in the UK is now aware of the plight of the Uyghurs in China, which still pretends that what it is doing to them is not genocide. At least our media have made it quite clear of the suffering involved. The obvious people during the Holocaust who did shine a light on that darkness were those whom Yad Vashem have deemed the righteous amongst the nations. Most people will be aware of Nicholas Winton and the Kinder Transport, and even of Oscar Schindler, who employed Jews in his factories to prevent them being taken to the camps. And there are many more, two more spring to mind. Ernest Leitz ran, ran a family firm who designed and made the Leica cameras in Germany and became known as the photographer's in, photography industries Schindler. He employed many skilled workers who were Jews. And when Hitler came to power in 1933, he felt bound by his strong Protestant religion to help them and many others to escape. He assigned them to overseas sales offices where they were helped to find jobs. This is now known as the freedom train. Sukihara Senpo was a Japanese diplomat serving as vice consul in Lithuania. He saved thousands of Jews by signing transit visas for them, disobeying orders from Tokyo. When he finally returned to Japan, he was dismissed and had to find odd jobs to earn a living. These and many like them 
or shining a light in the terrible darkness of the Holocaust. We can all do this by being kind and understanding of each other. Whichever faith we may be, we are all God's children. Finally, in these difficult times, many people are struggling with depression. Churchill called it his black dog. Those suffering from this dark state of mind can be helped. Note it, recognize it, and do what you can to bring some light into their lives. Choose to be the light in the darkness. Hello, my name is David Wood and I am the Cabinet Member for Community Safety and Resilience on Croydon Council. It's my privilege to be asked to be with you today, sadly virtually, for our Holocaust Memorial Day ceremony. Holocaust Memorial Day is the International Day of Remembrance for the victims and survivors of the Holocaust and subsequent genocides and we have commemorated this day in Croydon every year since 2001. The theme for Holocaust Memorial Day 2021 is be the light in the darkness. With this theme, we are asked to consider the different kinds of darkness. This might be identity-based persecution, deliberate misinformation to spread fear and hatred, or denial of justice, for example. And we are also asked to consider how we can all be the light to counter that darkness, perhaps through acts of solidarity, resistance to oppression, or through challenging the mysteries deliberately spread on social media and elsewhere, which do so much damage to our social fabric and community cohesion. In 2010, I was honoured to meet the Holocaust survivor Gina Turgle in the Holocaust Memorial Day ceremony that year, where she was one of the special guest speakers. When asked why she continued to do so much work talking about the Holocaust to young people and to others, despite being well into her 80s by this time, she said, we will continue to do our bit for as long as we can, securing the knowledge that others will continue to light a candle long after us. And so as we pray to emerge from some of the darkest times in our own recent history, it is my privilege to join with you all in lighting a candle to underline our commitment to do our bit and to be that light. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Olivia Marks Waldman, Chief Executive of the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust, and I'm delighted you're attending this event. You are taking part in one of thousands of activities taking place across the UK to mark Holocaust Memorial Day in schools, prisons, libraries, and civic ceremonies. Holocaust Memorial Day is an international day of remembrance to commemorate the six million Jews who were murdered in the Holocaust, and the millions more murdered under Nazi persecution and in the genocides that followed in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia, and Darfur. The 27th of January is the anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau, the most notorious concentration and extermination camp. Together, we bear witness for all those who were murdered and we honour the survivors of those regimes and all those whose lives were changed beyond recognition. And there is still much to do to make sure we can live in a world that is free from identity-based persecution and hostility. By the end of this event, I hope that you will all know more about what happened in the past and that you will understand the impact that it had on the individuals who were persecuted and that you will go on to take action. You can find more at our website on hmd.org.uk. I will leave you with the words of Sir Nicholas Winton, who rescued 669 children from Nazi-occupied Europe. He said, Do not be content in your life just to do no wrong. Be prepared every day to try and do some good. Thank you for taking part in Holocaust Memorial Day and for taking the time to learn from genocide for a better future. Thank you for joining us to mark Holocaust Memorial Day. Your attendance is part of the national picture of Holocaust Memorial Day with thousands of activities taking place across the UK, supported by the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust. 
We know that everyone who attends Holocaust Memorial Day events learns more, empathises more deeply and goes on to take action to build a better future. Holocaust Memorial Day is the international day on the 27th of January to remember the 6 million Jews murdered during the Holocaust alongside the millions of other people killed under Nazi persecution and in subsequent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda and Bosnia. The Holocaust threatened the fabric of civilization, and genocide must still be resisted every day. Our world often feels fragile and vulnerable. Even in the UK, prejudice and the language of hatred must be challenged by us all. We meet today at a time when the UK is divided, with many of us experiencing uncertainty, fear and grief. Increasing levels of denial, division and misinformation in today's world we must remain vigilant against hatred and identity-based hostility. Yet we know tens of thousands of people are coming together to mark HMD, to help those in need and to build a better future. Communities are standing in solidarity and experience togetherness, even while we're apart. The theme for Holocaust Memorial Day or HMD 2021 is Be the Light in the Darkness. It encourages everyone to reflect on the depths of humanity but also the ways individuals and communities resisted the darkness to be the light before, during and after genocide. Be the light in the darkness is an affirmation and a call to action for everyone marking HMD. We can all stand in solidarity. We can all choose to be the light in the darkness. Despite the horrors of the Holocaust and Nazi persecution and more recent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda and Bosnia, People continue to be the subject to persecution and violence based on their identities in the UK and around the world. The Holocaust and the genocides that followed shook the foundations of society. These tragedies demonstrate the deadly consequences of allowing hatred and prejudice to go unchecked. But genocide doesn't happen overnight. It's a process which can be stopped at any stage through acts of kindness, resistance and stories of hope. On Holocaust Memorial Day, we have a chance to think about what we can do to put an end to persecution and discrimination. My hope for the Holocaust Memorial Day is for the people to learn about the genocide so that it won't happen again. The more people commemorate the Holocaust on Holocaust Memorial Day, the more awareness there will be of the dangers and the more people will learn. I hope that the Holocaust Memorial Day can inspire people, especially young people, to understand that you know they, they can make a difference, that one person can make a difference. I want to ask the young people, as they are the decision makers of the future, to learn the lessons of the past so that these crimes will never happen again. My dearest wish and hope is for us to live in harmony, to respect each other, and learn to live and let live. We all have the opportunity to use Holocaust Memorial Day to learn the lessons of the past to create a safer, better future. Holocaust Memorial Day was created on the 27th of January 2000 when representatives from 46 governments around the world met in Stockholm to discuss Holocaust education, remembrance and research. At the end of this meeting, all attendees signed a declaration committing to preserving the memory of those who were murdered in the Holocaust and in the subsequent genocides. We will now read the Statement of Commitment, which was adapted from this declaration to affirm our support for Holocaust remembrance and ensure that these horrors are never forgotten. We recognise that the Holocaust shook the foundations of modern civilization. Its unprecedented character and horror will always hold universal meaning. We believe the Holocaust must have a permanent place in our nation's collective memory. 
We honour the survivors still with us and reaffirm our shared goals of mutual understanding and justice. We must make sure that the future generations understand the causes of the Holocaust and reflect upon its consequences. We vow to remember the victims of Nazi persecution and of all genocides. We value the sacrifices of those who have risked their lives to protect or rescue victims as a touchstone of the human capacity for good in the face of evil. We recognise that humanity is still scarred by the belief that race, religion, disability or sexuality make some people's lives worth less than others. Genocide, anti-Semitism, racism, xenophobia and discrimination still continue. We have shared responsibility to fight these evils. We pledge to strengthen our efforts to promote education and research about the Holocaust and other genocides. We will do our utmost to make sure that the lessons of such events are fully learnt. We will continue to encourage Holocaust remembrance by holding an annual Holocaust Memorial Day. We condemn the evils of prejudice, discrimination and racism, we value a free, respectful and democratic society. Dear diary, I sit alone every day beneath the dirty, cold bed, replaying in my mind the words which they said, daughter, Promise us that you'll hide someplace and know that no matter your religion or race, people can learn to love everyone. But don't stop at love now and remember to run. Forever in our minds, you will always be. Escape these bonds and set yourself free. And with that, their eyes shut. I screamed and I cried. While holding back the tears, I scurried to hide. As the bombs prance wildly from churches to homes, Fragmenting old buildings and erupting aerodromes. I find in my soul a single flickering spark, with the badge of the Jews nestled in the dark. And amongst the memories of those who bled, and those who lay there motionless, dead, I find a pride I've had since my birth, of my brave soldier father buried beneath the earth, and the mother I lost several months before, who I'm failing to remember anymore. With all the lives lost, triggering nothing but hate, I wait for the world to realise, I just wait, and I wait. For now is not the end, I can reach in my heart, a desire for life and a hope to restart. In the streets I can hear the deafening fire, of guns killing many and shrills in a choir. Because what used to be love, in a planet of care, has sent innocents dying, and families in despair. In the plea for safety, we scurry and we cower, in the midst of Nazi Germany, the source of the power. I find loving in this war is a weakness alone, hearing final crying and the snapping of bone. And having what I love be torn away, leaving scars in my flesh absorbing faith each day. I wonder to myself when will it be over, as I clutch from my satchel a four-leafed clover, recovered from the grasp of my ancient ma reminding me of her like a much-needed scar. I was told to keep this in case of bad luck, yet the image of her dead is never unstuck. I wish for her to have had it, for she needed it more, as she lay there swollen on the blood-drenched floor. I hear footsteps below now, and the sound of croaked voice. My life is at stake, yet I have every choice. Do I run away bravely, carrying my knife, or wait to meet mother in a peaceful afterlife? Around me are skeletons, decaying and old. Can you die in peace, or is there more untold? A crackle of flames, and danger is near. Would my mother want this? I fear, and I fear. Nazi boots are thundering, as I reach the trap doll. I crawl through, panicked, my wounds aching and sore. And as I cry here in the dark, feeling nothing but ambition, the tears streaming rapidly, blurring my vision. I slump down by the concrete, in a crimson stream, 
holding in my heart a single dream. That someday in the future, before we're all gone, the love will be returned and our hearts turned on. In the bravery of those whose lives we've lost, and our freedom to many has cost, will be remembered in honour of how they fought, and how they worked for what they thought. Despite what anyone ever said, they chose to be who they wanted instead. By Lyra White from Riddles Down Collegiate. This is Mr. Sokpal Din, who was born in Cambodia in the late 60s and lived through the uh, regime of Pol Pot and a Khmer Rouge and everything that happened in Cambodia um, in, in the, for four years during the 70s. And Mr. Din has got words around his recollections of what happened at that time. So I'll hand you over to Sokpal Din. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sokpal Din, one of the survivors from the killing fields in Cambodia. Today, it is such an honor, great honor, that I was invited to speak about my life experience in the genocide. The theme for the Holocaust Memorial Day this year is Be the Light in the Darkness. The genocide happened around in the world that we live in, which is in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. All the genocide are similar to the situation, which is losing life, killing, tortured, everything. But my life experience in the Cambodian genocide is different from we had in the Bosnia, the Rwanda or Dapa. So in, so on the 17th of April, 1975 to 7th January, 1979, I was in the killing field in Cambodia. At the age of 17, I was forced out of my home at gunpoint along with my family and many Phnom Penh residents. We were told that Americans will bomb the city. We must leave immediately. We were told that we will be returned back home in two or three days. We believed them. We had nowhere to go but to follow the order. I saw the mass ev evacuation of Phnom Penh, seeing family torn apart, some members lost lost never be seen again. The elderly children and pregnant women, everyone in the terrible stage, we were walked stumbling, stumbling around or over many dead bodies that left from the night before when the Khmer Rouge attacked the city. Many patients with drip attached to the arms somewhere uh, were on push chair or on the back of bicycle track in the crowd. Some of them with, with uh, injury and with the bandages. In one day, the whole city had changed almost the, to, to the ghost town. Smell of blood, thick smoke and of burning houses blended in with the gunpowder in the, in the air. Children were crying without their parents. We took us a few days to get out of the city to the east side. We, they, a few days and, we, uh, and weeks by, went by without any news, no radio, no anyone or anyone to help us, except the Khmer Rouge hated face staring at us. My father was taken away along with three senior male members of my relatives and two teenage cousins. I never seen them return again. We were forced to live in the countryside for nearly three months before we were evacuated to the remote area in the jungle and left to die. During those time in the jungle, we were forced into hard labor by the communist Pol Pot army 
and their groups. At the time, in our family, we left my mother with a three years old daughter and two young sons aged five and six, including myself. My mother and brothers were forced to work in the rice field or in the potato farms. This is involved involved many long hours in terrible conditions under hot sun and cold rain. We never knew what day in the week, no break, no weekend or any day off. If we were ill or unable to work, our rice allowance will be cut. For each of us, we were given one table of one tablespoon of rice grain for a day to live on. We had to find any edible plants or leaves to mix with our rice allowance. We weren't any, we were starved, suffered with malaria, diarrhea, and other diseases. There weren't any medicine, hospital, or any doctor to help. We had to find any alternative herbal medicine that can be used to cure ourselves. My 70 years old grandmother mother, and five years old brother died in the jungle, both were too ill and starved to death. Any educated person, teachers, students, doctors, bankers, civilian, civil servants, entertainers, soldiers were executed or faced in prison. We share accommodation in the, mark, in the uh, makeshift bamboo hut in the jungle. One by one, many of my cousin relatives die in with many people in the jungle. My six years old brother was tortured and punished. He was falsely tied up and put on an iron hill for picking pumpkin flowers off the field. He was starving, it was a living hell, and many times we wished to be dead rather than alive. I seen some Phnom Penh uh, raped all home content and taken in huge convoys to Vietnam. Being sub subject to the lies and the deceit of the Pol Pot army that led, led to so many deaths. I seen how the people army, Pol Pot army was made up to 12 or 13 teens carry machine gun, AK-47. I've seen evacuees forced into selection camps as fashioned and it found again the purport ideal, they will be executed. Seen tortured by purport regime, I had been tortured myself by them, punished because I couldn't complete their target. I was given a daily target to dig, digging soil to build a dike to create water reservoir. They measure one meter width, two meter length, and one meter depth for me to dig. Then carried the stall to fill into the basket on my shoulder to fill the top of the dike. The ground was solid like a rock without proper tool to use. My boss hands were sore and blistered. Someday I was kicked, shouted at. I had no choice but to carry on working till it finished the target. We had no help from outside world. We felt hopeless, frightened, and wished to die sooner. The world seemed to forget about us. We were like living in the prison without walls. We heard the Khmer Rouge call, call it year zero. Everything started from zero. We share our life in the jungle with wild animals. We used his, the moonlight, stars at night, instead of instead of the light and look at the sun for time. We were all left to die. The reason I'm here today, because I didn't give up my hope, my hope to return back home, continue my education and meet my father again. And when we knew that was impossible, we dreamed every night for food. It was mentally, physically exhausted. It was hard to describe of, of difficult and painful it was at that time. I couldn't cry even I was young. I suffered enough, but I always had my hope. 
On 7 January 1979, we were liberated by the Vietnamese troops from the living hell. We had nothing left, our home, our possessions, our relatives, plus the country was under communist Vietnamese regime. We still have no freedom. We escaped to the refugee camp near Thai border in hope to find freedom. And on the 4th of August 1987, we were very fortunate to start a new life in England. My life experiences in the genocide had made me become a stronger person and appreciate life more. This brutality was created by cruel people and their groups. They were monsters worse than animals. They were full of hate. Any genocide and atrocity should never be forgotten. Some people are afraid to speak out, to stand for justice, to stand against hatred, discrimination and racism. These has caused the atrocity in Cambodia. They had no chance to, start to stand against the power crazy leaders. We were kept quiet, silent in the dark until it's too late. Many innocent people lost their lives through execution, never had a chance to speak or had justice. People need to know and learn from the past. I am hoping to carry on living without regrets, anger and disappointment, even though I lost my dream, my education and family, but I'm pleased to share my life story to the world. I have written a book called The Killing Field of Cambodia, Surviving of Living Hell, and it had published in November last year from Amazon. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for that. That was really interesting. But the thing that strikes me is that your, your, your life has really been in three distinct segments before the Khmer Rouge and Pol Pot through your young years and early teenage years. You were living in Phnom Penh, which is the biggest city there, in a relatively middle class family and, and having a pretty reasonable, normal life. And then you entered into this hell for four years where the object of life really, as far as I can tell, having read your book, was for each day to survive. You didn't think further than that, really. And then fortunately, you've been able to get away from that and you've built a new life here. And, and, and I was wondering whether you had any thoughts about the way your normality changed during that time, the more normality of your everyday life. Yes, um, it has changed me a lot. And it had given me all the experience and like eyes opening because I was born in Phnom Penh, never seen any rice field, rice paddy. We went for holiday sometime, you know, um, to visit relative in the farm and thing. I never knew much about agriculture or much about the how to survive anyway, because everything we have in the market, you can go there and I got people cook my food, everything. We have a, a middle class family and we never been starved or short of money or short of food. But this killing field, the, the experience I had is taught me a lot of how to survive. And because at the time I was so young, was 16, not even 17 yet, because my birthday in September. But um, this had given me such a, a great experience with the living to, to how to survive and the experience in a hor horrible life experience as well. So both have given me all this um, uh, idea how to survive and to be stronger. And one thing I never give up is my hope because I always hoping, keep hoping that uh, it wouldn't be here, wouldn't be like this forever. It will change one day. It will change, never be like this. And we, before the killing field, we, we, we seen, we seen all the foreign, like France, a French, and another country around us. How come it became silent, became quiet? There's no, no one involved or no one came to help us. There must be something to be, somebody would, would, would heard, would know about this, the, the, the killing field, the, the Pol Pot. Uh, my Rouge, and at the time I don't even know who the Pol Pot was. We only know the communist group 
we don't even know the communists. We don't know, we didn't know who the leader of the communist group either. Until we came out, then we heard that it's a Pol Pot and thing. And uh, I, my mentality, it wasn't, I haven't changed. I still, still have a kind of love, caring and kind toward people, toward anybody. I never been once be a, a selfish or greedy person. I always aware and keep um, everything for the for tomorrow. So I don't live for a day. I live for tomorrow. So you know, at least this life experience have changed me to to understand the people and the mentality of the people around. Some is just selfish, greedy, hate. Uh, selfish as they normal and then that's not good not good for the community or society and have done enough I never been selfish I love look after my mother my brother and sister until the end of her life in England that's why it gave me such a good uh, experience and good memories about my my past and I never regretted I regretted that I couldn't be doctor, I couldn't educate, my, uh, continue my education. At the end of the day, we all came here without having anything with us. We learn in this world and we gone again, everyone, and we cannot take anything with us. What we can take with us is our, our name, our legacy, which is I wrote this story and into book for the world to read at least people can learn from my life experience at young age. While everyone in England, somewhere around the world, enjoyed themselves, you know, in 1975 to 79. But unfortunately, my life experience is absolutely living in hell. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I think that what you're saying is that your light in the darkness Yep. It's that at the end of it, you were able to establish a life and also that it ended. Yeah. Thanks very much for your time and thank you again. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Richard Chatterjee. I'm one of the local councillors and I'm the chair of Croydon's SACRI, which is the Standing Advisory Council for Religious Education, which has in recent years run a competition for Croydon schools to help foster engagement with and contemplation on the year's HMD theme. This year, pupils were invited to write a short essay or story or poem or do a painting or make a short film on this year's subject, Be the Light in the Darkness. The members of SACRI have again cast their votes and the winners are, in the primary school category, Nicole's story from Cypress Primary School and in the secondary school category, the Light in the Darkness Butterfly Sculpture from Riddlesdown Collegiate. Many congratulations to the winners. The schools will each receive Jewish artefacts from Sacri to contribute to RE teaching. Thank you. Thank you. I think we can all agree that we've heard some incredible contributions today. Before we end our ceremony, I would ask that you please join me in thanking all our guests and everybody who has worked so hard in making today's event happen under such challenging circumstances. In particular, our thanks to Madam Mayor, to Mr Sokfeld Din for his powerful testimony, Marilyn Arbusman and John Kerbel from Croydon Synagogue, Lorna John and the pupils from Oasis Academy Coulsdon, Lyra White from Riddlesdown Collegiate for her thoughtful poem, Croydon Music and Arts, Councillor Richard Chatterjee, Penny Smith Orr for her tireless work on today's event, our Holocaust Memorial Day steering group, uh, Council Officers Richard Clark and Yvonne Gay and our community's team, and finally and absolutely crucially, Halima Ikuomola for her incredible work on the technical side for putting all the various items together for our event today. Each year on this day, we pause to reflect on the terrible things that can happen when we become divided. Events of the past year, where it has been, become more difficult than ever for us to be together physically, threatened by a virus that does not discriminate on the grounds of colour or creed, have only served to remind us that in our shared humanity, we have far more in common than that which divides us. We are at our best when we stand together to fight against those who spread hatred and fear. And in doing so, we can all be that light in the darkness. Thank you for joining us today for our special Holocaust Memorial Day ceremony. And a good afternoon to you all. Thank you.